Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today I am going to be painting a squirrel witch for my Burrows and Badgers force. This is actually the leader of my good characters, the Grey Witch, who is actually a red squirrel. So I have started with a spray coat of Corax White, and now I'm going to deal with the fur, beginning with Leather Brown. And I'm going to give a coating of Leather Brown to all of the fur areas, including the paws, and uh, this is going to be two thin coats to make sure there is a good coverage to work from. And then, of course, we're going to use Agrax Earthshade. Let's get this out of the way early. And uh, everything that I've painted brown will be getting a coating of the Agrax Earthshade to bring out the details, get the shading done, and... Uh, prepare us for the next stage. This fur needs quite a few different colours. We're switching to Monster Brown and I'm doing an overbrush which is a little bit like a dry brush um, but with a little bit more paint on the brush for a slightly less dusty finish. But I'm being very light, very light hand over everything. So all over this tail, all over the pools, all over the face, the ears. Just bringing those details out, making it a bit brighter. We're now going to switch to Mephiston Red, because like I said, this is going to be a red squirrel. We are being very, very light with Mephiston Red, because we don't actually want the fur to go red. It's supposed to be a little red tinge. We're switching to Lava Orange, and just focusing on the most raised areas, really, and again, being incredibly delicate with this overbrush, uh, just to really hit those highest details. And then finally, we're going to switch to Avalon Sunset. And again, we're just building up these colors very, very delicately, very lightly. Um, very, very delicate light brush strokes, just to give subtle hints of the color. We're now switching to Cadian Flesh Tone, and I'm mixing this with a lot of Lamian Medium. So it's very thinned out, but I still uh, have some good control over it. And I'm going to be using this on the snout and the pools. And what I'm doing is I'm building up the layers of colour, feathering it out towards the brown fur that we've already painted, um, trying to blend it in and get natural transition between the two colours. This will take quite a few coats to get it right. But that's the fur done, so now I am switching to oak brown and this is going to go all over the staff. And uh, it will require two coats, any darker brown will do. And then I'm going to use Balthazar Gold just to paint these bangles, these two bracelets on her arm. It's back to Agrax Earthshade Liquid Talent. And I'm going to put this all over the staff and over the bangles that have just been painted. Just to uh, bring out the definition and the detail. And then I'm going back to Leather Brown and I have thinned this paint considerably. So I've got a lot of control over it and I am lining in the raised details on the staff. Now you can do this with dry brushing or wet brushing, over brushing, whatever you want to call it. But because I'm trying to get a more animated cartoony style, I am actually lining it in. Because it gets a, a slightly bolder, um, more animated style to it and again we avoid that slight dustiness that you can get when you are dry brushing it just requires care and like I say thinned paints we're then switching to Eshen Grey and like I say um, this is a red squirrel but she is the grey witch because she wears grey so a coat of Eshen Grey all over the cloak not over her dress, we will be dealing with that separately. Um, we will need two coats of Eshen Grey on this to get a good base coat. And then we're going to switch to non oil and we're going to very carefully put a coat of non oil over the grey that we've painted. Obviously, we don't want to go over any of the fur or anything else that we have already painted, but we want to bring out those details in the cloak. We're now switching to Dawnstone, and I'm going to thin this a lot. It's very, very thinned out, and I'm painting it over the raised areas of the folds of the cloak, and I'm going to keep building this up. I'm going to build it up layer on layer on layer to um, emphasize the shading and uh, bring more color and brighten up the most raised surfaces. And this is just a case of eyeballing it, taking your time. 
gradually working up the colours, going back over the paints as they dry to brighten up certain areas and uh, working at it until you get something that um, you like the look of. I'm thinning these with water rather than Lamian medium at this point um, because I don't need uh, too much precision. And when that's done, we're going to switch to Celestra Grey. And we're going to do pretty much the same thing. We've watered it down a lot and we are working up those colours again, working up those highlights, but focusing a little bit more to the most raised areas and really thinning the paint down and using it like glazes to get transitions between the shades of grey. Because it's a cloak, we don't want really stark, defining transitions we want it to all sort of blend together nicely and swirl together and look like a, a natural piece of fabric and eventually that's what you will end up with and now i am switching to corax white and i'm switching to corax white because we now need to deal with the dress and at this point it's got a lot of other paint all over it so we're going to put two coats of corax white on there to uh, get it sorted out now this is the Grey Witch, so I wanted the colours to be grey on her clothes, but the rest of her army do have green uh, as a prominent colour, so I wanted some green in the miniature. And being as I had just received some Nihilac Oxide uh, with Warhammer 40,000 Conquest magazine, I thought I would give it a go, so I'm going to put a coat of Nihilac Oxide over her dress here. And that will give um, a slightly ethereal green. Because what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and um, I'm going to use a method that they use for painting smoke in Warhammer 40,000 Conquest, and I'm going to use it on this dress. So we get that hint of green, but it's still a sort of grey green, and it has a ethereal smoke-like quality to it. Which is why we're switching to Celestra Grey, and we're thinning the Celestra Grey slightly, and just layering it on the raised details so that Nihilac will show in the recesses of the dress. Um, blending uh, up to the grey. We're going to go back to Eschen grey and this is just to block in her belt. Um, just with a slightly darker grey for a little bit uh, more contrasting colour. And then we're going to use Nuln Oil and I'm going to um, paint that over the belt to obviously bring out the definition of the belt but I'm also going to line in along the edges for that more cartoony animated style. Agrax Earthshade is going directly over Corax White on the wand because um, I wanted to make it look like a white oak wand. So it's a, a very pale wood that she's used to create her wand. And that's all we need to do for the wand. And now going back to Dawnstone and I'm going to block in the fingernails and I'm also going to apply Dawnstone to the belt. Um, to bring out the most raised details. And now we're switching to Bugman's Glow. Bugman's Glow is my go-to colour for tongues at the moment. And just a dab of that in there. I'm now switching to Ulthuan Grey. And I'm going to put that on the fingernails and the teeth. On the fingernails, being careful not to completely cover the grey that we've already put on. We're nearly done. We're going to use Abaddon Black Thin Down for some better control and we're going to block in the eyes. On all of these anthropomorphic animals, the eyes are really important. They uh, bring character and life to the miniature, so um, it's worth making sure you really get it right. We're going to use Pallid Witch Flesh now, again thinned down, and we're just going to put a dot of white in each eye for that little reflective shimmer that finishes the piece. And that is it. All I've done on the base is I've used some um, Astro Granite and then that's been highlighted, um, Abaddon Black around the base. And then after varnishing the model, I have used some PVA glue and some little um, leaves just to put some scatter on the base, um, which is hard to see in this picture, but just to um, emphasize the whole gray witch, um, autumn witch type feel that I wanted her to have. And that's a finished thing, and I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have liked it, please consider pressing the like button. If you have really liked it, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.